Um, I, I'm Bill Shear, I did, and you guys met Sandy. Um, and you know, you know what's interesting? I was, I was just praying this morning, and I started thinking about signs and wonders. And, and you know, you, we, we know about God's presence. We know about God's word. We know about seeking his face. We know about his right hand. And there's, there's this, it, there's an interesting aspect of God, which is God's voice. And I thought about this, and I thought, you know, when there's people that are hard of hearing, you have to, you have to speak louder. And you might have to, uh, you might have to look them, look them face to face so they can read your lips. And, um, and, and, and I think that a lot of the body of Christ is like that. I don't know that it's so much that we don't hear his voice. I think we allow tons of other voices in, into our spheres. And, um, but, but then there's deaf people. And, and deaf people are, are able to communicate via sign language. And, and what hit me was that signs and wonders follow the, the preaching and the profession of God's word for people that can't hear. You know, that's not us. We hear his voice, right? And another voice we won't follow. And it's interesting because there are so many other voices out there. There's so many things. And, and I'll be real honest with you. I'm, I'm not going to accuse anybody of listening to or and hearing other voices because I'm the pot calling the kettle black. I mean, I'm... It's, um, I, 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 I'm prone to, oh my gosh, I don't like that. Oh my, oh my gosh, I can't believe, uh, turn that off. I mean, it's, and, and, and I'm just telling you, we've got to, we have to be able to turn the world off. You know, to be carnally minded is death. Write that down. To, to think like the world, to have a mindset of the world is death. If you're wondering why things aren't working out in your life, possibly, maybe your finances or your marriage or your children or ministry aspirations or dreams. You know, I mean, man, I'll tell you, if, if I were the devil, I would come after the dreams of, of just common everyday believers. You know, I, I, what's interesting is, is the Bible promises God will pour the spirit upon all flesh. That your sons, our sons and daughters will prophesy, but then we'll, we'll dream dreams and we'll see visions and it's like, wait a second, the aspect of God, our life should just be the fulfillment of just dream after dream. You guys with me? After dream. And I mean, that's, that's who we need to be. Otherwise, we, we don't differentiate ourselves from the world at all. I want to be different than the world. Not just for different sake, but because we're better. I mean, we've got to look at it like this. A greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world that I personally am created in Christ Jesus for great works. See, if we take this personally, let me tell you, we have to hear God's voice. The, the wrong way for us to think is, man, I need, I need to factor God into my life, or I need to, I need to consider God's, God's value system for my life. That's the wrong way to think. And I think that's how most church folk do think is that, man, we want to raise our kids God's way, and we want to dedicate our business to the Lord, and we want to, and it's, and it's like, oh my gosh, wait a second. You know, we have to force the kingdom of God into our lives. I'm, not, I'm telling you, our, our flesh is not going to go down without a fight. So much so, the Bible tells us that we have to crucify our flesh daily, See, what's interesting is God's mercies are new every morning because our flesh comes alive every morning. So every day I've got I've to allow God's mercy into my life and I've got to crucify my flesh. And my flesh is the carnal way that I think. The, the, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, and being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Think about that. Put that in your dead gum pipe and smoke it. Any smokers in here? I'm playing. <laughs> but, 
but I think that what's amazing about this is we serve a God that we hear his voice. I don't know, I, I don't know, I don't know many like Muslims, but I don't know that they're hearing the voice of Islam or Muhammad. But we hear God's voice. It's so, it, it's so personal for us. But I, but I think, and again, I think that the, the enemy, the, 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 the plight of Christians is the enemy is convincing us that we don't because it doesn't come through these. You know, what, it, one, of the, one of the letters to the church of Corinth that Paul wrote, he, he said that, he, he said that um, what, everything that you can see or everything that's visible was made by what is invisible. And you're like, oh, okay. But then, but then listen, a, a, a cross-reference verse for that for me is Mark eleven twenty four 24, that you say to this mountain, be removed to be cast in the sea, 23, and, and don't doubt in your heart, you'll have whatever you say. But it's like, wait a second, so I can speak to a mountain, that mountain has to be removed? Yeah, because what is made, what we see, was made by what we don't see. So what God's doing is God's saying, okay, light be, here, here's what I'll do for you. I'll give you that capability. Do you understand? This is not a supernatural ability that we have in our lives that we can speak to a mountain and it's removed and it's cast to sea. That's not a, listen, it's just the capability that we have that we're related to God now. It's just who we are now. It's not this, that God doesn't serendipitously just drop this power on our tongue. No, you know what? Man, we've got to have it, have our heart vested in God's word. And we've got to have his promise. Man, we've got to be able to speak God's promise in season and out of season, no matter what we see, no matter how we feel, no matter what's going on. Or we're going to listen to all the voices in the world, all the chatter. And I'll tell you, it doesn't mean that God's not speaking. I'd, I'd venture to say this is a little judgmental, so you know, if the shoe fits, I guess. But if you're not hearing God's voice, it's because it's cluttered with all the other voices the world's offering. Because it's not that God's not speaking. Man, here, let me, let me help you. Everybody just look at me for a minute. God speaks to me. <laughs> I'm that guy in ministry that, no, Simeon can tell you. Man, we've got peers and friends. They'll say, dear God, if Sheer could do it, I could do it. But that's the truth. Man, we hear God's voice. Man, right now, God's speaking to you. But, but th the problem is, is the, the frequency of our mind, which makes up our mindset, that we're, we're what, how, how does Romans 12, 1 start? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 says, and don't be conformed to this world. And you're like, okay, I don't want to be. I don't want to be conformed to the world. I don't want to be like the world. I want to be different. I want to be better. But, well, here's how, this, here's how this works. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, write this down. The first step to transformation in your life is the willing to sacrifice. And you're going to say, well, wait a second. What am I going to sacrifice? You're going to, you're going to sac Let's start with your opinion. Let's, let's, let's go number two. Let's go your attitude. How about that? How about you sacrifice some attitude? See, I mean, it's, it's, it's really, it's simple. It's really basic here. And, and what's, what's interesting is we've got to force the kingdom of God into every aspect of our lives. In, in, Mar, in Matthew, the sixth chapter, could you guys turn there? Matthew six. Therefore, I say to you, verse 25, do not worry about your life. Underline that, highlight that, tattoo that on your. Do not worry about any part of your life. You understand, this is red letter. This is Jesus. He's sitting around, and you know what? These guys are kind of freaking out at that moment. That's why he had to say that, because he's thinking, this better work. All of these guys are thinking, this better work. See, this works for me because Sandy and I painted ourselves in a corner. 
I've heard other preachers, I've heard, I, I was a Bible school, and they, this guy got up and said, man, if I didn't, I could be a businessman. Yeah, you know, honestly, and what I was thinking is, you probably should. That was rude. <laughs> Accurate, yet rude. Um, I, I don't know what I'd do. I don't know what Sandy would do. I don't. See, I think this works when we paint ourselves in a corner and it's like, I'm, I can't get out. I have no exits. I think that's what happened with these, the apostles of the Lamb. Okay, they, they came to Peter and said, he, Jesus said, who do they say that I am? And he, threw some, he's, he, was, he was off guard. He threw some things. And then he finally said, he said, who do you say that I am? He said, you're the son of the living God. And, but it, even in that same context, the Bible says many turned and walked, walked with him no more. Because you know why? He got up and said, you got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. These guys get in the Jews crowd. He gets, he's, uh, they're looking at him thinking, dear God, what are you doing? Tell me what you're doing. It's freaking me out. In the Bible, it, 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 John 666 said, many turned and walked with him no more. Okay? But, but we look at this now, and we understand the context. But you know what? Jesus explained that to his disciples over and over and over. They took communion. They broke bread. The, I mean, that's how they recognized him after the resurrection. He broke the bread, and they're like, oh, my gosh, that's his move. That's his tell. And, and, and so they said, so they, they, he turned to Peter and said, are you going to be the next to go? Peter had to be thinking, why me? <laughs> but I think Peter was one of those guys that was always positioned himself to, for the attention of Jesus. I love that. But he said, where would I go? You have the words of eternal life. Where would you go? See, that's how, that's how invaluable church is. Man, the, the, the covenant that these men are building with people in their church in Muskogee, it's going it, to it's gonna transform generations. See, that's what's happening here. There's four generations of people throughout this church. It's transforming generations. I mean, this, the, God doesn't take this lightly. And, and Jesus said, look, don't worry about your life. He said, look at the birds. He said, they don't sow or, or, or reap or gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you worrying can add 18 inches to your stature? So why do you worry about your clothing? Or you can consider the lilies and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. See, do you understand just coming to church? This Wednesday night, I understand I'm preaching to the choir. Okay, this is, this is kind of a, I'm going the extra mile, God. I'm going to church twice this week. But you know what? If you do that, if that's your pattern, it's going to get in you. The culture of this church is we win. We're not just competitive. We win. Does that mean what, there's, there, there is an adversity? <laughs> I, I mean, adversity, it, it's, just, it's, it's uncanny how much adversity there is. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them from them all. And yet, and, and then he said now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you who uses a tiny bit of your faith? He said, therefore, don't worry saying. See, that, let me tell you, you get a, worry, you get a worrisome thought, don't speak it. You, have, you get a doubtful thought, don't speak it. Bible says you're, you're, you're controlled by your words. That you're, by your words, you're justified. By your words, you're condemned. Don't worry saying, okay? Don't say it. Don't let it come out of your mouth. You can never take that back. Remember when you are in junior high, hey, 
Hey, I take that back. No, no take backs. You can't take it back. And, and therefore, don't worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? You know, what's going, man, what's happening? What, what, what's around the corner? What, what's happened with our monetary system or what's happened in our government or what's happening with, with our produce or what's happened in agriculture? It's like, don't worry. For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things are gonna be added to you, granted to you. God's gonna say, here, bro. And what's he giving you? It's all that stuff the Gentiles are seeking. Let me tell you what Gentiles seek, cool stuff. How many of you guys know any Gentiles? How many of you guys know crooks? How many of you guys know thugs? The men, they got gold chains and those, those wheels that when their car stops, they keep spinning. What do they call those? It's such a letdown. Spinners. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. <laughs> I mean, they're like, the way Jesus puts thoughts together is just phenomenal. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. You're going to have issues tomorrow. Don't freak out about it. Why? He gives you mercies tomorrow. He, he gives you daily bread tomorrow. I mean, see, this speaks ra radically to our priority and or the order of our life and, and honestly, the sequence of our life. Man, Kennedy just had a baby and I don't, there's, it, there's no worry about how, what am I going to do with this kid because she's watched her brother have four kids and her sister have three kids and her family have hundreds of kids. And it's that, oh my gosh, if I trust God, if they can do it, I can do it. Are things going to work out in your life? Is there any doubt? See, God removes all doubt. See, in, in, in Colossians, the third chapter, and let me tell you, the, if, if you are going to become a student of the word, the gospels are great, the proverbs are great, but Paul's letters are, they set up the new covenant, the kingdom that we live in now. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on things of the earth. I'm telling you right now, there is, there is, it's ridiculous how much information there is. It's ridiculous how many sound bites there are. It's ridiculous that the, the, the commentary of the world is all editorialized. There is no news. It, and, and we have to recognize that. See, when we put God first, his kingdom first, our dreams actually come alive. See, I want to pastor a church where you can realize your dreams here. I do. I do. But I need your help. I need you to dream. And I need you to profess God's promise over that dream. I mean, to the point where, you know, we, we refer to the tithe here and probably should teach more about it. Because the tithe is the greatest principle there is on the planet. Did you shave off the first 10% of the whole of your income before taxes, before bills, before anything? So, so now your carnal mind is going to think, well, wait, I'm living off 90% now? Yeah, you are, okay? But you're also living with this promise that God just stacks heaps upon you. He said, prove me now in this, that I'll not open the windows of heaven 
and pour out a, a blessing so great that you'll, you won't be able to receive it. It'll be so much. Try me. And then, and let me tell you, how many guys that's good enough? That's like, okay, you, you got me at that. He said, I'll rebuke the devour, devour from the midst of you. Let me explain to you the connotation of that word rebuke means to make public humiliation of. So you've got this devour in your life. Some of you guys have had generations of premature death or sickness or poverty or whatever it might be. Well, you know what, you know what that is? That's a devour that's right in the middle of your, your, your life and your livelihood and, and your family. And you know what God does? He makes public humiliation of that devour from the midst of you. And then, and then you know what he says? Your fruit won't fall immature from the vine. You know, I've told this story and probably most of you have heard it, so deal with it. Taylor was in a hospital bed. The doctors were going, they just went like this. He had an amoebic parasite and, and they, couldn't, they couldn't figure it out. He had golf ball sized lesions on his liver and it was a huge attack. And the doctors, it, it was just bad news after bad news after bad news. And Sandy and I went out in the hallway and she said, what that doctor just said, we are never speaking that. I said, I got it. And then we both looked at each other and said, hold it. We tithe. Our fruit won't fall immature from the vine. See, so it's not just our assets. It's like for me, it's my children. So if you've got children that are away from God or you've got children that are agnostic or children that are stiff-arming the message of God, let me just tell you, the tithe, it, it puts them in this, in this funnel where they just get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to God, You're, he'll, he'll, he'll pour out a blessing, you're unable to receive it so great. He'll rebuke the devour from the midst of you. Your fruit, meaning your kids, won't fall immature from the vine, and you'll be called a delightful, now listen to this, not a delightful person, not a delightful people, but a de delightful land. How about that? Man, you know what that means? The home of the brave and the land of the free. We're a delightful land. That affects our country. See, so number one, seek those things which are above. Number one, get your eyes off of the immediate. Get your eyes off of what's being shoved down your throat. Number two, set your mind on them. I'm telling you, we've got to become the most narrow-minded people on the planet. Oh, but you're narrow-minded. Jesus is the only way to the Father. Yeah, I'm very narrow-minded. Yeah, but, but what about, oh, don't we, don't we all pray to the same God? No. Let me, let me tell you, there's, a, there's an occasion in the Old Testament where they were looking for gods. And finally, God had enough, and God just came and said, smoke, and he said, hey, I'm it. <laughs> I'm the only God. There are no others. Well, that's who he is in my life. That's who he is in your life. Yeah. See, your mindset determines your future. Yeah. How many of you guys want a future? Yeah. Your mindset determines your destiny. Your mindset determines everything pivotal in your life. And you, you'll, you'll think, oh my gosh, I've, I've got to have a winning mindset. And how do we do that? It's not that we don't have adversaries. It's that we overcome no matter what. We're overcomers in this age. That's what the Bible calls us. See, this is what sets order and priority and sequence in our lives. Man, that there's a sequence now in my life. It's like I go from, I go from blessing to blessing. I go from glory to glory. Man, God seated me in heavenly places with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. That's all I got. I'll tell you, I'd like to preach more, but anybody in here ever worked with cattle? Can I see your hands? I, I didn't sit on a stool preaching tonight because I don't do that. I laugh at guys that do. I'm playing, I don't because I wouldn't be able to get up. Because I, I got a text from Taylor. 
and said, hey, can you help me today? I'm like, yes, sure I can. All we've got to do is take this, how many head of cattle is it, Taylor? 70,000 head of cattle. <laughs> no, 70. All we've got to do is get them through this gate. That's all we got to do. You know what I know after today? Cows have an aversion to gates. And let me tell you something else about cows. They're just going to do whatever the heck they want. They weigh 1,200 pounds. So, so here I am. I'm thinking... I'm thinking, I, I could be as rugged as I have to be. What does it take to be a cowboy? This cow's running at me. And you know what? And I'm watching other people. They're going like this, and the cows are turning. This cow didn't turn. So I'm like, okay, okay. I lowered my shoulder. I wrapped up around that cow's neck, and I let go. Because he didn't care. It's a good day though, Tay. Thank you for the experience. Thank you. I checked it off my bucket list. I don't have to do that again. <laughs> there was one time, I'm the one. How did I get the job at the end of that shoot? Who gave, who, who delegated that job? I'm 64 years old. Okay? There's this there's this shoot that these cows, and let me tell you, it, it, you gotta pack a lunch because they hate gates and shoots. And so this shoot, at the end of the shoot, is this deal that clamps onto their heads so you could give them a, a shot and spray them with uh, ivermectin. And... Uh, <laughs> I was going like this with it. <laughs> and, and, uh, and something else for flies. Well, I got pretty good at it. And, um, and then I caught one, like below his shoulder. They, they, they get in that chute, and sometimes they take off. And, and if you pull too quickly, you know, you're with your son, and guys, they, they laugh at you. And, uh, and so I got it, and I pulled down and caught its shoulder. <laughs> Who said, uh-oh? <laughs> the next thing I knew, I was in the air thinking, there's a barbed wire fence behind me. But it was humiliating. And I'm over it. Anybody need to get your life right with God tonight? <laughs> Anybody need to make Jesus the Lord of your life? I'm going to heaven. I'm just telling you, today I was very thankful for that promise. <laughs> but for real, I just want to pray with you. Matter of fact, let's just all pray together. Father God, I give you my life. I make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. I mean it, God. Jesus is my Lord, my Savior, my King, my Messiah. God, I'm your people, your child. I hear your voice, and I don't follow another one. God, I shut the voice of the world off, and I seek those things that are above. Matter of fact, my mindset is not on earthly things but it's in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for tuning in to Guts Church YouTube channel. I'm Pastor Chano Trevino, the assistant pastor here at Guts Church. And on behalf of our leadership team, our staff, our church, it's our hope that this message met you right where you are. If it did, I bet there's someone you know who could use the encouragement of this message in their life. And you sharing it with them can make all the difference. The mission of Guts Church is to help people win. 
And you can be a part of that simply by sharing, or better yet, inviting someone to tune into Guts Church Online with you every week. Take that next step to be a part of what God is doing right now in this moment in time by being committed to showing up, placing a premium on God's word, and receiving all that God has for you. You can share this message, gather your friends for services, make it a priority to make this the place you want to be. God has so much for you. I truly believe that. We love you. We're praying for you. Can't wait to see you soon.